guys, Rex here. It is July 9th at the time of this recording, 2025. I just got back the Schmidt & Better PM2 from Germany after it's been gone from my hands for 74 days. And they returned it back to me. It came in yesterday at 4.45 p.m. I did log the entire customer service experience. Uh, you have to keep in mind that a company like Schmidt & Better, this is the PM2. This is probably the most widely issued precision marksman rifle optic in the world from police and militaries, at least in the Western world for sure. Uh, their main customer is governments. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit different on the customer service end than a company that's geared to do it a little bit different. So there's uh, empathy there for where they're at. Nonetheless, you know, when the thing breaks, these things are not cheap. This is over four thousand dollars nowadays. What do they cost? I don't even. I don't even probably want to know. I got this years and years ago, and it's been a good trooper, an excellent optic, one of my top recommendations for a long time. The PM2 has a track record for a very good reason, and we'll get into that in a minute. However, now this one did fail for the second time after years of use, and yes, some people have said Rex, that's pretty heavy use compared to what most people do. I don't think so. Not compared to an army guy or a marine. That's heavy use. I baby this thing. I'm very nice to my expensive optics because I bought it and I can't afford to break it. Plus, I don't like being out without my needed optic for a long time. So I don't think I was super hard on it. It did have a lot of use. Plenty of shock. It was on, you know, some big rifles. And I understand. Um, but... Um, we did have what appeared to be a lens that came misaligned or loose or something, and it got very blurry, especially in one quadrant of the optic. If you would adjust your magnification, certain spots, it was like, whoa. Um, parallax, certain spots, it would just gray out the entire bottom half of the scope. You could visibly see through the objective lens that there was some, you're looking at the edge of what appeared to be a lens, maybe, either... Maybe something came, I don't think something in the objective became delaminated because there's a apochromatically corrected three-layer lens in the front on these big, high-density optics that like have really good glass. Um, so there's three different layers of glass in these. I don't think that's what it was. I think that I was seeing something in the erector group. And we'll go to the parts list in a minute, and I will report to you what I, this is my best educated guess looking at the parts list, what might have happened based on what I've seen. But first, I'm going to go through the customer service process that I experienced in this deal. So I have a service request log that's on the original post. You can see the timestamps. Every time something happened with customer service, I logged it in real time on that video. So day zero, I have sent a formal request. So that was 24th of April, 2025. It was sent to the Schmidt Bender office. Office uh, passed me to the service department for further instructions, standing by at 8.30 a.m. on the 25th of April. So the, the process to get initiated was relatively smooth and quick. There was an automated process that happened that was a little frustrating for a minute, but someone was out of the office in the service department. They said they'd return in like, I think uh, a couple weeks or something like that, which is not going to cut it for what I need. Uh, but they were able to get back to me in relatively short order. Um, I did receive a phone call from the sales and operations manager in Virginia on the 22nd of May at noon that the scope was in Germany for repair and they're requesting funds to get it fixed. Now, the first time I sent this in, they didn't charge me for anything. The second time I sent it in, they needed uh, 260 US dollars for parts to uh, make their repair. So I did get charged for it. It was also, what did I pay? I have what I paid for shipping. It was $96 for shipping with insurance because I do like good shipping that's fast and reliable and insured. So $96 for the shipping and uh, two, what was it, $260 for the parts. Okay, now $260 is the cost of some lower um, priced optics but this is a $4,000 optic. So, of course, I'm going to pay the two sixty dollars to fix it. I'm not going to just have a broke optic laying around. So, kind of at the mercy of them on that, right? Uh, the, the 
operations manager did send me an itemized list of the parts. It was in German, and I will go over the list of parts now. But to make a long story short, I finally just got it back yesterday. That's 74 days out, and it is now back in my hands, and I'll go over the parts list now. All right, so we do have the parts list that came with the work order for the Schmidt & Benner PM2 that came back from Germany. It was out for 74 days for repair. Um, I don't think that the repair took 74 days. It only took 140 minutes, but uh, that was the process to get it in and out. Of course, this is a controlled item, so to cross borders, it's a military export, etc., to certain countries. There's a process involved to get stuff sent back and forth on this level, okay? Uh, but based on the symptoms that I had, we should be able to get a, or at least an, a fairly educated assessment of the mechanical issues that were likely going on inside this CM2. The overall diagnosis, I would guess, is a scope likely experienced like an internal lens shift or tilt in the parallax focus group. I got the ocular set for my eye. To 10. Perfect. I mean, maybe a quarter of a click long but not even really and the only reason i can see it is because of the quality of, the, of how well this thing sees so it's very clear now it's really clear i'm going to bring it up to 20. exactly on target so it's tracking i mean it's like the line the, i got this cranked up to 25 power i'm seeing perfectly clear at 25 power and the, the crosshair line is perfectly subdivided by the line on the target. So this is an example of exactly perfect dead-on balls accurate tracking. And of course, you can go left and right, you know. And that's where the, the Wetzlar five-piece mechanism in this type of optic really shines. Is when you start to get windage dialed in on your conventional three-piece scope designs. When you have windage dialed in and you get to your extremities of your elevation settings, because it's a round circle and there's a counter spring on only one side, it's pushing down that screw against the edge of a circle or off center from the middle of it, and it will actually veer off and start to curve when you get at the far extremities of your adjustment range. But the five-piece mechanism in these Schmitz and your other true German engineered optics on that higher end like that, like Hensold, and Collis, they don't really do that. That's, I mean, in, in all honesty too, like there's a lot of really good German optics, but when it comes to reliability of tracking precision, even with extremities of windage dialed in, that's where these things, that's why professionals who do some of that kind of work in ELR really like these things. So I'm gonna bring it back up. 10. Perfect. And all the way back to zero. Exactly. Perfect tracking. So that's good. Now, the parallax on a PM2 comes all the way back to 10 meters. So I'm at 25 exactly now. I have reasons why the um, optic uh, testing board is at that distance just to minimize uh, your noise from Mirage as best as we can. And I hope that wind ain't too bad. Gosh darn wind, right? Can't record it. But I'm seeing like with perfect clarity right now um, that target down there. I can see. It's like like I'm looking at it. I'm standing next to it with a um, magnifying glass. I mean, I'm looking at the bird poop on the the stuff in the bird poop on the fence post it's it's uh, attached to and um let's do a reticle check while we're here 
Perfect. Back off a little more. See the whole reticle? I'm gonna move this over to center it. It's perfect. The reticle is exactly perfect. So that's good. So, man, these are nice optics when they work right. You know, I mean, they're really, really precise. And I got a beautiful, clear view here of this test board. Just, I mean, even when you crank it up on max power, it's just perfectly clear. That's what makes these cool. So I'm happy that this thing is working. I'm gonna look at something out a little farther. Gonna adjust my parallax to around here. Beautiful. Crank it up to 15 power. Now, when you're at the extremities of your adjustment range on the elevation knob, you're gonna see a little bit of a netting on one side of the lens. If you come to the middle someplace like here, it'll round it out a little bit. So sometimes guys will see that because when you're zero, when you have it all dialed all the way down to zero, um, the top will be a little bit, a little bit vignetted or shaded just a tiny bit. Um, but in the middle of your adjustment range, like when you're shooting at range dialing and some dope, it's perfectly clear all the way around. I mean, this is old tech too. It's a classic, right? So there's newer stuff that uh, might have some of that engineered out of it, but uh, there are also advantages to the old design that we can talk about in a different video. But I'm looking, gosh darn, is this beautifully clear. <sighs> Got old Schmidt back in business. I'm gonna look at my tree cages here. Amazing. Just you can see really goodness. How you doing, sweetheart? Can I have some water? Thank you. So I don't know, I'm pretty pleased. <clears throat> um I'm gonna look out maybe that way. Get some good mirage through the corn out there. Look right over the top of it. I'm seeing insects at like 600 yards. <laughs> it's just so clear. So yeah, Schmidt and Bender is like still my favorite. Any instrument, if you get it that many years of use out of it, is um, you know prone to have some kind of issue at some point. And it's like you know I'm wrecked, so I actually use the stuff. I got a lot of miles of use on it from before, and. Um, the first time I broke it, very well could have set the stage for the other stuff that broke in here too. It just didn't completely, because it was ultra cold weather testing. And I was wearing gloves and it was really cold, like 20 below, 30 below. And I was trying to manhandle this objective, uh, or excuse me, the magnification ring. And I don't like those speed levers, those throw levers that give you more leverage. If that sucker doesn't want to move, then it shouldn't move. But I grabbed on it tight and I cranked it anyways and stuff in the cold weather did come unglued. And so it just, whoop, it just, it wouldn't turn back to magnification, it just zoom black, like to a tiny little straw. And then as you zoom in and out, that black straw, <laughs> something in the, in the magnification, the zoom group there got out of whack, but, um, there we go. She's back and she's back in business. So that's good news. I'm happy.